Today on the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast, we are talking about flatter abs over 40. Ladies, you are going to want to listen in on this episode. If you're a woman over 40 and you are looking to lose weight for the last time, you are in the right spot. Welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. My name is Nicole Simonin and I'm your host. And we all know that we need to move more and eat less, but why don't we do it? I give clients the skill sets they need through fitness, nutrition, and most importantly, mindset, because that's the missing piece to all this. So if you've tried a ton of diets and are still looking for the latest and greatest 12 week workout program and still haven't seen results, it's the mindset part that is missing for you. So when you become a client, you will not just learn how to lose a weight, but you're gonna learn how to keep it off for life. I hope you will enjoy this podcast, and when you're ready to lose the weight for the last time, head over to shapeitupfitness.com and schedule your strategy session where possibility starts and results begin. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. Thank you so much for being here. I cannot tell you how excited I am about this podcast. I had been thinking about doing a podcast for a while um, before I actually started it, and I'm so glad that I did because I love this venue for sharing thoughts and ideas. I love having guests on each week, Um, but most importantly, I just love sharing nutrition, fitness and mindset with you. So I'm hoping that you are finding these podcasts valuable. And if you want to submit a topic or an interest that you have in nutrition, fitness, or mindset, you can get on my email list at shapeitupfitness.com slash weekend. Go there, fill out the information. You'll also be on the list and you will get tons of valuable information each week in your inbox. So Today, we are gonna be talking about flatter abs over 40. So having flatter abs is typically the ultimate goal to show that you are fit. But there are many other benefits to having flatter abs besides having a ripped core you can show off. And by the way, you don't have to have a six pack to have flatter abs. Achieving the elusive six pack really comes down to how much body fat is covering your abdominals. And believe it or not, we all have a six pack of abs. It just might be under a couple of layers. So one of the other things to keep in mind is everybody's abdominal structure is a little bit different. And some people have very defined six pack abs. Some people have very defined four pack abs. Some people just have a flat band for abs. So everybody's abs are going to look a little bit different. So today I'm going to dive into some of the myths behind flatter abs. I'm going to talk about what abs actually are, and I'm also going to give you some exercises that you can do on your own to start getting those abs a little bit flat, flatter. So let me dispel some flatter abs myths. Number one, the abdominal muscles all work together. You cannot isolate one particular muscle versus another. There are, this is number two, there are no upper and lower abs. You can try to focus in on where you feel the exercise, but you can't isolate the abdominal muscles individually. And hang on because I'm going to dive in deeper and you'll understand why that is. Number three, You will not get flatter abs by doing a gazillion ab exercises or crunches or any other kind of ab exercise if you are not focused on losing body fat. That does not mean to skip your ab exercises altogether. Absolutely not. There are many benefits to strengthening your core, especially as we get older and we're over 40, that pelvic floor needs to be maintained, ladies. So definitely still work your abs. Just be aware that because you're doing a thousand crunches a day, unless you're losing body fat, you're never going to see your abs. Well, at least the abs that you want. They're not going to get any flatter by doing more crunches. Number four is typically you're not going to see any ab definition in a female unless they are below 18% body fat. And that also depends on where you carry your body fat. So I did a podcast before about 
understanding where your primary fat storages are. And if your number one fat storage area is your stomach, and these are usually people that are apple shaped, you may not see any definition until you're like 10% body fat. Now, the other caveat to that is the only way to get a true body fat reading is through an autopsy. So <laughs> unless you plan on signing up for that, which I do not recommend, <laughs> you are not going to have 100% accuracy as to how much body fat you are carrying. There are um, different ways that you can measure body fat from DEXA scans um, to uh, body fat uh, monitors. Like I use a scale that registers body fat, but I know that that's not 100% correct. And I also, there's also skin calipers where they kind of squeeze your skin. Um, and find out the body fat. Again, there's a lot of factors involved as to whether or not that's 100% accurate or not. And it also depends on who's giving the test. Um, if you're dealing with the scale, like I always tell my clients, you know, it depends on how much water you have in your system. It depends on what time of the day it is. You know, all kinds of factors are involved. So keep in mind when I say you need to be around 18% body fat, um, unless you're an apple shape, you need to be around 10%. Those numbers depending on what you're using to measure your body fat, may not fall into the right place. So my best suggestion is when you see your abs and you like the way they look, you're probably at the ideal body fat that you want. <laughs> All right, so let's dive into the abdominal muscles and what they actually are. So your abs or abdominals are actually made up of four muscles. And if you want to get um, a better picture of this, go to shapeitupfitness.com, look under podcast and get on this podcast link, this episode link, and you'll be able to see pictures of your abdominals. So the abdominals are made up of four abdominal muscles. It's the rectus abdominis, the external oblique, your internal obliques, and your transverse abdominis. So the rectus abdominis is the abdominal muscle which runs up and down your torso. So the rectus abdominis attaches right underneath your rib cage and runs down into the lower part of your pelvis. This is the muscle that contracts strongly when we're performing sit-ups or leg lifts. Um, examples of abdominal exercises for the rectus abdominis are sit-ups, leg lifts, and for a reverse contraction is a pelvic tilt. External obliques, which is the second muscle, is attached from the lower portion of your rib and down into the pelvis. And these muscles run on a diagonal fashion across your core. So the external obliques allow you to bend to the side and twist to the opposite side of your torso. If you were to position your hands like you're reaching into your pockets, that is the direction of the muscle fibers to the external obliques. So examples of exercises that kind of hit the external obliques would be like a bicycle crunch, anywhere you're twisting and moving your like shoulder to your pelvis or your knee. Next is your internal obliques and internal obliques attach from the lower portion of your rib cage and down into your pelvis as well. These muscles also run in a diagonal fashion across your core. The internal obliques allow you to twist to the same side of your torso and assist in side bending. So if you were to cross your arm over your torso with your fingertips down in the direction of the muscle fibers, that would be the, the direction of the muscle fibers for your internal obliques. So examples of these exercises for the internal obliques would be a bicycle crunch or a side crunch. The next muscle is your transverse abdominus. The transverse abdominus is the deepest of the abdominal muscles and it runs horizontally across the torso. Think of this muscle as your girdle or a corset. So the goal of the transverse abdominus is one, to keep your organs in place, and two, is to help you stand up. So a great example of a transverse abdominal exercise is the plank, or simply pulling your stomach in, like pulling your belly button to your spine. So those are the four abdominal muscles and they do work in conjunction with each other whenever you're doing an exercise, but you can see from the examples that I've given that you know you can definitely kind of hit different muscles in different ways. So for your transverse, you're pulling your belly button into your spine, for an oblique, you're twisting, and for your rectus, you're doing like a crunch, but all those muscles are working. So if you find that you have an instructor that's telling you to work with your upper abs and your lower abs, 
look into their certification. <laughs> All right. Why should you focus on flatter abs? Your core is keeps everything together. Your center of gravity, your pelvic girdle, and having flatter abs is going to help you keep your back strong. I don't know how many people I have worked with who have had bad back problems. Now remember, I come from a physical therapy background as well, but they've had very bad back problems. And the problem is they think it's from their back, but it's actually from weak mu abdominal muscles. Your abs have to be stronger to counterbalance the weight of whatever's holding your back. Um, you'll notice too that if a lot of people carry their weight in their stomach, a lot of times they're leaning back and they're pitched back. That's a lot of pressure on that back to try to keep yourself upright and you're not able to engage those abdominals to kind of pull it forward and flatten out that back. Um, flatter abs will also ha help you have better posture. Same thing I was just talking about is having, you know, your back sit up straight. Um, I know for years and years and years as being a professional ballet dancer and you know, I started ballet when I was four. So learning how to stand up is is like lesson number one, 101 in ballet. And I, I do slouch every now and then, but like this posture is natural for me just to sit up straight and to engage your abdominals and your back. You know, it, it's just from ballet. That's how it's been ingrained. But the flatter the abs, the stronger the core, the better posture you're gonna have. Having flatter abs may prevent back problems in the future. Now, even if you have weaker abs, there are other things that could be involved if you are having back problems. So you could have tight hip flexors, you could have tight um, quadriceps, you could be doing different postural things. So keep that in mind, but definitely having flatter abs and stronger abs is gonna help hopefully prevent back problems in the future. Having flatter abs also is indicative of the fact that if your abs are flatter, you're not carrying a lot of body fat in that area. And that's where all our organs are. So having flatter abs could possibly prevent diseases such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes, um, high blood pressure, any of those. So if you go to the show notes for this episode on shapeitupfitness.com, you're going to see some exercises that I have because this is a podcast. You can't exactly see the exercise. Uh, link will be in the show notes for the podcast and also for the video. So you can check that out. Um, but definitely go there, check out the exercises that I have listed, try them out, start off small, start off doing like 10 of them, um, and then see how you progress. So remember, you do not need to do a thousand gazillion crunches a day in order to see flat abs. You really need to lose body fat all over in order for those abs to come out. Remember those myths that we talk about, talked about that the abdominals work together. There's no upper and lower abs. Um, you're not gonna get flatter abs by doing gazillion crunches, which I just said. And depending on where you hold your body fat is how your abs will show through. I hope this episode was helpful to you. Go to the show notes, check out those exercises that I recommend, and I will talk to you next week. Have a wonderful week. If you are looking for quick and easy meals to put together that have minimal cleanup time, then I want to introduce you to the No Fuss, No Mess, Shape It Up cookbook. This is perfect for the non-chef who wants quick meals, minimal cleanup time, and a smaller waistline. Inside your cookbook includes healthy recipes with easy to find ingredients, time savers in the kitchen, easy cleanup, and most meals are made in one pot. Spend less time in the kitchen and more time doing the things that you love. The No Fuss, No Mess, Shape It Up cookbook. Now available at amazon.com.